I hear both guitars together. One of the ideas behind the design of Gold Digger Sound is that it combines the sort of classic large format live recording space with smaller writing rooms for the more modern producer. The building has a very long history and it's been a soundstage for a very long time. To my knowledge, it was a silent movie soundstage in the 40s, and then it was an acting school in the 50s, and then it was Ed Wood's soundstage in the 60s. And then after that, it was music rehearsal spaces for many decades. Apparently, some of the last Jimi Hendrix and Doors rehearsals were here, and then later in the 80s, this was Slayer's practice space, and it was the Germs practice space. We essentially acquired all of the gear for the studio in two phases. Phase one really focused on the greatest hits of recording. We wanted to make sure that we had enough vocal microphones and mics for drums and mics for guitar amps and things that we knew were gonna provide the nuts and bolts of most of the recording process. And in phase two, we had a little bit more fun and went for some more boutique microphones and microphones that maybe not every studio has. But we wanted to cover our bases in the beginning and make sure that anybody who was working in here would have the tools that they're used to using and that they know how to get a good sound with. Emily, could you hit a couple bass notes? For Emily's bass, we, we ran it through a vintage flip top B15 Ampeg. We have two signals running at the same time for the bass. We have the bass going through a DI box directly into the console. And then we're using an old 1970s Sennheiser 441, which is a dynamic microphone, but has a very nice low end response. Just uh, play the kit. So we're going for a mono overhead. We're using an AEA R84. And then we're also using an AEA R84 out in front of the kit, going into a Spectrasonic mic pre, which is very cool. And then we've got um, an SM7 on the hi-hat. Kind of gives you like a dark, chunky hi-hat. We've got 421s on the toms. We've got a D112 on the bass drum. And then we've got a 57 and a Biodynamic M160 under the snare drum. And then we're doing what's referred to as a crush microphone on the drums. There's an omnidirectional Electro Voice 635A in the middle of the drum. That's going through some distortion processing. This is kind of like a lo-fi thing for the drums to add some dirt and color and texture. And then we're miking the room with U87s and with a C12. I hear your vocal mic. So you buy your friends a drink, baby wasted in the sink, and your friends they're all leaving. For vocals, we're using the Shure SM7B, which is a very popular microphone in the broadcast world, but also is a utility mic in the studio world as well. A lot of singers love this microphone. It's basically a giant SM57. It's got a bass roll off and it's got sort of a mid-range, upper mid-range bump that you can do. For the hi-hat, when I'm using the SM7 on the hi-hat, I'm not using any of these filters. I'm just keeping it flat because I don't really need to make the hi-hat any brighter. It's already a hi-hat. And when you're doing vocals, you can take a little pen or a pencil or a tweaker tool or something, and you can flip these switches that are detented under here, and you can make the microphone brighter and a little bit less murky. I can see you won't let me go. You won't even bat an eye. I can see you won't let me go. Keep me high. 
you could kind of think of microphone capsules as lenses. Like a different lens on a camera will, will pick up an image in a different way. Just the same way that a capsule on a microphone will pick up an instrument in a different way. Take your time, go do a couple more passes if you want. Enjoy the ride. For guitars, we've kind of created a guitar area of the room that's not right next to the bass. It's a little bit further away. And um, we're doing, there's two guitar players, so we're doing two amp boots. This DeVille is going to the white Telecaster, normal Telecaster over here with the, with the lipstick pickup. In this case, we're using a Biodynamic M160 as the ribbon microphone, and we're using a Neumann FET 47 as the condenser microphone. And then we're using this vintage Fender Princeton going to the other Telecaster over there that has P90 pickups on it. So even though they're the same guitar, they have wildly different electronics and they sound completely different than one another. And in this case, we're going for a little bit more cut. So we're using a Sennheiser 421 and we're using a Royer 121. try to see the band live first if I can. I want to know what they really sound like, what they're used to playing like before they're in the studio and they're thinking about recording. Yeah. 